All right, hello and welcome to the GGG Podcast. I'm Paul and this is Phil. Uh, Before we get started, quick reminder to click that subscribe button and if you're interested, you can also follow us on TikTok at Golden Glazed Gaming. How you doing, Phil? Uh, What have you been up to this week? What have you been playing? Oh, uh, it's... uh, I'm doing well, thank you. It's been a good week. Uh, I played more Starfield since we last spoke. And I have been playing most recently Lies of P that became available like yesterday on Game Pass. Right on. And I think I've put in a solid six hours, so I can I can discuss it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I'll leave that for when we get to it on our agenda. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah. All right. All right. All right okay. Uh, <laughs> what have you been playing this week? Um, lots of Starfield. Still, I've been making a, a crap ton of progress on that. And uh, last night, uh, Mortal Kombat came out, uh, and so I've been playing a lot of Mortal Kombat 1. I love it so much. Um, I understand, I guess, why it's not everyone's fighting cup of tea, but as a person who's not like a big, uh, I'm not like a big fighter guy. Like, I just love Mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat. I love that there's an actual story in the campaign. And it's amazing to me that um, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that the the campaign in this game is so much better than the Mortal Kombat movie, and even just the cinematography, the storytelling, just everything is just so much better than the actual movie because the movie was garbage. Um, even the good movie, like the the more recent one, <laughs> what which was like an earnest attempt to be a good Mortal Kombat movie, but. Yeah, I, I will say I haven't played Mortal Kombat one yet, and I guess why don't we start off with the games releasing this week, huh? Yes, yeah. this, this is the first one on our list. Perfect. Uh, uh, so Mortal Kombat one released on Tuesday, Monday night. Tuesday? Today, while we are recording, uh, I came uh-huh. out. Um, you know, we're over on the West Coast, so nine p.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, Monday night. So that's when I started playing it. I got to. Uh, I didn't have to work this morning. So I, I, I got to stay up a little bit and play that. So I, like yeah, I said yeah. already, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, I really don't have a lot of gripes with it so far. That's, that's to say I'm not like really into it. I'd say really the only thing that I could think of is I am um, a little slightly disappointed by the roster. Um, I, and I think that's just because with Mortal Kombat 11, they had so many freaking characters um maybe maybe too many and then you know they added all the dlc and everything like that uh but there there are some fighters from the previous last two games that i do miss like uh, like kotal khan i love kotal khan um and a couple of other ones a couple of weird missing characters like Jax is not in the game uh sonya blade is not in the game uh they're they are as they're cameo characters but those are like secondary characters you can't really play as so interesting but aside from that love it um you know my partner was watching me play it and she was amazed by like the graphics and just like the lighting system and the cutscenes because it was so freaking beautiful i will say uh nether realm that has been doing an amazing job probably since injustice well actually the the mortal kombat just before injustice um, they really, I don't know if that was X or nine, but they really kicked the story off and were just like, we're going to actually tell you a full story so much so that while I enjoyed the fighting every time I was like excited to see what happened next. And like the conflicts between the characters made sense for me. Um, I actually watched a whole YouTube video today of just Johnny Cage interacting with different women in the game. <laughs> uh, and it it's it seems great. I'm also really excited for the DLC characters they have announced because they've got yes. uh, Peacemaker, Homelander, and um, the dad from Invincible. <laughs> I can't think of his name. Omni Man. Omni Man, uh, voiced. I, th- I think that's going to be voiced by J.K. Simmons, right? Oh, I yes, it's got to be absolutely. Yeah, considering he just did a turn in Baldur's Gate, uh, it, he's he's not too snooty for video game voice recording. Uh, I did see something about Mortal Kombat 1, how the game director was like, I think all of our uh, all of our characters could be voiced by celebrities one day, which is... Ooh. Oh, that reminds me, since we talked about it last week, um, mm-hmm. Megan Fox as Natara. She yeah. is awful. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. She's so bad. Like I <laughs> she's definitely like a grunt character, so she does not have any major role in the story at all. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, she phoned it in like big Oof. time. I don't even think like you know how they have to when you're getting hit or thrown around, you have to make the ah and ooh and blah and those sounds. I don't even think that she did those. This sounds like a different oh, person. No. And so she's it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I guess that's the fear, right? That they might phone it in. Uh big actors who don't know that like this yeah. is a, a real thing, you know. Yeah, I mean um, Peter Dinklage is a great actor. He was horrible in Destiny. So, you know. Oh, that's good. It's still <laughs> People long for the original ghost. Uh, they do. <laughs> they do. Huh? <laughs> it's. I think it's just people like uh, old things, sure. which explains why people love uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I have to dig at him at any opportunity. Uh, should are you prepared to move on, or is oh, there anything yeah. else you want to say? About? Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's keep it rolling. Um, Hell yeah. Next up on the list is Payday Three. I have a couple of friends who are really into the Payday series. Have you ever played Payday, Phil? I have not. It seems like a very intense, uh, it's almost like Doctor Who, where I'm like, man, <laughs> the people who are into that are so into it, and I, it feels like I can't get into it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's not as complicated as it, uh, as it looks. I, like, I think... Uh, something that we were talking about on last week's uh, podcast was uh, onboarding and accessibility. And Payday is one of those games that doesn't really explain anything to you. And so it's one of the, so you can do it, but just have someone with you who's played the game before who can just bark orders at you, and you can go, "Yeah, boss. Yeah, I'll go put the bags in the truck." <laughs> you know, that like that kind of stuff. That, I like the role play of that since you're bank robbers, like you're the yeah. new guy on the job. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've I've seen Payday Two go on sale so many times. Maybe when this one drops a little bit, I will pick it up and just. Just to like get the feel for what payday is. Um, my one of my hardcore payday uh, friends, uh, he honestly recommends like waiting to the game has been out for a while because when payday two launched, there really wasn't all, all there was like not a lot of content, and he has that um, he's suspicious of that this time around. But like now, if you yeah. go play payday two, it's just flooded with content. Um, Something I'm a little wary of. I've seen like some beta footage out there, and the AI does not seem like it's gotten any better uh, for like guards yeah. and police officers and that kind of stuff. And so, in a game like that, you kind of need to have good, you know, AI because that that's what you're playing against all the time. There's no like versus mode. So well, that that's kind of the thing with like I know this is a cooperative multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like multiplayer games like this or Rainbow Six Siege, like they kind of don't find their footing until a year in. And they're not so much as games as services as much as they are just like a living game that's constantly getting stuff added to it. Yeah. Um, so excited to come back to it. But I, I don't know much about Payday <laughs> at yeah. this point. It's cops and robbers. So you can only play as the robbers. Um, I did hear they had a cool launch event where like you basically could go in and you were like part of a robbery like Ooh. the payday dudes showed up uh to a bunch of influencers and like all right grab these bags put them in the van and then you got like a cool payday mask so that that actually sounds really fun i yeah good for them yeah right on <laughs> um moving right along we got gloom gloom haven excuse me are you familiar with this at all phil I am actually recently I was on a live action uh, uh, role play for Gloomhaven um, that took the uh, for Geek and not Geek and Sunday for uh, Good Time Society. So it was my first time getting to play it. Uh, I was playing the pen and paper RPG version mm -hmm. of their board game. This is the the PS5 release of their board game, but like with 3d miniatures and everything right that's the i believe it is only out for pc right now it is coming to uh, ps5 and xbox um but i think it's just available for pc right now and it is just uh it's just it's exactly like the board, the board game. game yeah yeah very cool uh yeah no i i love this it's cool just to see that they're i've seen on steam like a couple of other games that are like hey this is the board game but you just can play it on your computer and invite people granted it is a higher cost because everyone needs to buy the board game sure but i think it's or the virtual version of the board game but it's less than 
one person buying the entire board game. And yeah. it kind of invites I, everyone to play, which is cool. I think also the game is, I think it released for $35. It's So it's not a full price game. Uh, so there's mm-hmm. something. But I, I, I'm not really familiar with Gloomhaven. From what I've seen online, it kind of looks like a very streamlined like board game D and D, um, like very not kind of much more linear than D and D. Obviously, uh, is that yeah. a, is that an accurate description? Yeah, from what I understand, it is. You basically let's say you buy the original Gloomhaven. There's a couple of different adventures you can play through, and you keep your characters congruent throughout. Um, and they uh, like you have certain powers that are like based on your cards, and you do roll some dice. Actually, no, there's no dice rolling. It's all drawing cards. Um, yeah, it's like a deck game. Uh, it's a deck game yeah. with with some like role play involved, but you can kind of lean out of that if you want or lean into it. It, it is like basically a tabletop. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what's. It's Monopoly meets Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it still takes uh, over 100 hours to do. Uh, it does take over one. So you're getting some bang for your buck on this one, sure. ladies and gents. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, next one is You Suck at Parking. I had to put this one on the list. Hey, You Suck at Parking. I'm, oh, it's I the am name very of the game. neurotic when it comes to parking. <laughs> like, I will repark like three times. Uh, <laughs> so. I, I, I am the opposite. I would, you know, I might be good at this game because I'm just like, the car's <laughs> in kind of a space. We're fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. Um, but in the game, I love the title. I had to put this on the list. Um, you suck at parking. It's essentially a top-down uh, driving game where you race through uh, many different like little courses and you try to park your car uh, within this little zone. And it looks like a crap ton of fun. Uh, I'm I'm really curious. I might pick it up. I don't know how much it is. I'll have to I'll have to find that out. But um, yeah, you just watched some footage of it. Any curiosity for yourself? Yes, it looks like a single player version of uh, uh, of what is it? I can't overcooked. Like it's got mm. that vibe. Yes, where everything is kind of silly. The the song like is literally saying "You suck at parking" for the trailer. <laughs> like they've got this really light vibe that I'm into. Probably the perfect indie for just like if you like seeing weird stuff happen with physics. Yeah, it, it seems pretty cool. So I'm I'm in on this one. Uh, I might I might wait a little bit to see what I hear about it, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 uh, very exciting. And then the last one is Lies of P, and you've actually been playing this one, Phil, yeah? I have. Uh, I'm a sucker for anything that is a Soulsborne-like, uh, and this game is pretty damn good actually I, I heard like there was a demo out that people weren't wild about hmm. but i feel like this the best thing i could say about this game is it's not this is bloodborne we have at home it's actually feels like a spiritual successor to bloodborne okay yeah uh the the core of the game is you're playing as pinocchio uh in this like alternate telling of pinocchio muppets are not muppets puppets <laughs> are robots I wish it was Muppets now. God damn it. That'd be such a good game. Man, the the crazy creatures that they would design for that. Oh, my God. Ugh. Yeah, but everything has this, like, um, like Five Nights at Freddy's, like, kind of theme park. Because these robots were built to be, like, you know, a service industry. And then one day they turned. So you're kind of, like, walking through and you just see, like, this really happy-looking police chief, like, with the with the baton and the little cape and the hat just kind of slumped over and as you get near it animates and you see there's like blood on it and uh you you have to kill this thing the interesting thing about it though is it's not uh, if you've played dark souls games or elden ring i'm usually like a dodge guy this game encourages you to parry which uh throws them off it's kind of the best way i feel like to to kill the things rather than dodging because you have so little stamina Mm. um yeah. But it's so so far really fun. Uh, from what I've heard, it's it's kind of it it differs in the combat in that it reinforces being very offensive, as opposed yeah. to being like patient and waiting for your moment. Um, so that's what I've heard about it. And and also I've heard that there is actually a somewhat understandable story in the game, which is very yeah. unlike a Dark Souls game or a Bloodborne. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I, I feel like a Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, you have to do like a bunch of 
fan site reading and mm-hmm. uh, like read a bunch of folios and have like a, a Charlie Day style like cork board <laughs> with the, uh, yes. connected conspiracies. This one is just like, hey, go find Geppetto. Geppetto's your dad. He built the robots. We don't know why exactly. I'm sure we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's that's so, more story immediately that you just said in those two sentences. So yeah, there's a there's a really cool mechanic too. Uh, for your weapon building, you can like combine hilts and like tops of swords to like do different types of damage or like change up how this weapon swings. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff built into it. I'm excited to play more. I uh, I'm gonna try to finish it before some other heavy hitters come out this year. Sure. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, those uh, were the releases for this week. So let's uh, get into the news. So um, first on the list, we got Marvel's Avengers. It's a new low price prior to its to its digital delisting. So it is at a new low price on all stores online. And also, I think at GameStop, uh, it has been listed for as low as four dollars. Um, that's wild it is wild it is crazy uh, especially for such a big budget game it was a cluster f when it came out um so i'm not <laughs> necessarily surprised i am as someone who put a good amount of hours into the game i am somewhat disappointed but i'm not surprised how are you feeling about this uh i feel like avengers kind of got it was repetitive, sure. It kind of got a bad rap though, because as much as as much as it was like repetitive, and you kept doing not even just like the same things, but the same literal missions over and over again for a long time until they added some story stuff. Um, still, throwing your shield and hitting like five people as Captain America felt great. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I played as everyone except for the Hulk. That was the one I was like, I don't care about this, but. All of the abilities were so like fun to do. It felt like a, a 3D Diablo, I guess, was how I tr- oh, started yeah, to look at very, it. Very, yeah. Like um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine a while ago, and I was trying to explain to him. I was like, "This is really a spiritual successor to Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. That's what this game is. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not Spider Man. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's Marvel <laughs> Ultimate Alliance Four or whatever." <laughs> So agreed, agreed. I, I also really enjoyed the story of that game. I thought they did some interesting stuff, and like, uh, it got a little bit light at the end, but it was it just like you felt these characters. They got this stunning voice cast to do all of the different characters, and then like everyone they added, both of the Hawkeyes, Kate Bishop and Clint Barton, played differently. Mm-hmm. Um, Spider Man for the PlayStation people. So I guess like right now, if you pick it up, it's a full game. It's got a big, juicy rump for you to bite into yeah. in terms of content. Uh, and all of the like skins and takedowns and emotes are earnable in-game instead of having to pay for them like they were at launch. So I think it's a pretty great value. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you have not picked it up, you are a, any kind of Marvel fan, it is absolutely worth $5. Like, that's mm-hmm. ab- absolutely it is. Like, I... I even really enjoyed, I think this was the last DLC, but the Black Panther DLC was, I, I thought it was really good. And like, I liked the way Black Panther played. I thought he was different. I, I think that the the problem for me, like I also enjoyed the campaign. It wasn't perfect. It was a little, you know, cor- corny here or there. But overall, it was like, it was interesting. I liked the take on Kamala Khan. Um, but I, I think it was the meta that really ruined the game. And uh mm-hmm. Just like you beat the story, you got all the characters leveled up, and now it's exactly what you were saying, where it's just, now we have to do the same three missions over and over and over again. Because doing any of the other missions won't give me any rewards that will actually make a difference. And so that repetitive nature of doing those same three missions, and and with those three missions, there were only two, there were only two bosses that you would fight. Yeah. Um, you would just what was it? It was abomination and uh, and um, bone something bone crossbones. Crossbone? No, 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 no. There were three. There were three then. Three. There were three. Uh, yeah, because uh, abomination, crossbones, and uh, the one who copies your moves. Um, 
He's yes. In, he's in Spider Man. He was in Black Widow. She was in Black Widow. Um, yes. Uh, dang, this forgetting? is a tough one. Why am I forgetting the name? Taskmaster. Taskmaster. Task- yeah, there, there you go. go. Perfect. <laughs> um, so it was like, it was those bosses, and you just fight them over and over and over and over again. And so it definitely wore me out um, mm-hmm. that in an unfortunate way. And like people talk about um, enemies in games being like bullet sponges. These are just just punching bags where you just wail and wail. And it'd be like, I'm Iron Man and I just shot 12 missiles out of my back, out of my shoulders and launched them. And everybody who got hit by them is still up with full health. And you're like, why yeah. did that just happen? I'm a max level <laughs> Iron Man. Why the hell did that just happen? So it's very, I, I think that game probably could have used like another two years in the tank. Yeah. They release it with a couple more like activities and a couple more bosses. Give me even just like a 10 rotating bosses. And then like when you fight them for the weekly raids, you get something that's like themed off of them for your armor or your, your weapon super into it. But I think they, you know, they announced, God, probably seven or eight years ago, the game released what, yeah, it was in development for a long time. A long time. Yeah. It's it's a bummer that it uh, turned out this way. Still very fun for what it was. I don't regret spending, I think, $60 that I paid for it when it came out because I probably put a good 100 hours into it. So Yeah, definitely. Probably yeah. Same, same here. Same here. Um, I was a little... That Spider-Man wasn't my favorite, but that's just because I played Spider-Man on the PlayStation and it was just like, this is not comparable (laughs) last thing i'll say about it is that it's upsetting that the swing uh for spider-man in fortnite was better than the spider-man swinging in marvel's avengers that that was i think the nail in the coffin where i was like okay i'm done yeah yeah was not was very much of an afterthought at that point um Mm -hmm. okay uh moving on in the news uh gta 5 just celebrated its 10th anniversary and there has been no GTA 6 announcement. Um, GTA 5 came out so long ago, and it's been on three console generations, and it has been well supported. It's the GTA Online, uh, GTA Online still going, still one of the most popular games uh, streamed on Twitch to this day, um, which is speaks volumes to its longevity. But I will be damned if i go back to grand theft auto 5 just give i will jump on board for grand theft auto 6 but i i yeah i do you think that um they're waiting for like i don't know the game awards to make an announcement or you think rockstar will do its own event or or are they just gonna tweet something uh randomly and be like yep it's coming this day and then just do that I don't, I don't know, but you know what? I think you're going to eat your words when you buy Grand Theft Auto V for the PS6 in four <laughs> years. Don't uh, say that. Don't say that. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I don't know. I think that Rockstar is overrated at this point. <laughs> just okay. because. Okay. Just because they keep. They bailed so hard on Red Dead Redemption 2. They did. Uh, I have not forgave them like, for that. Yeah, they bailed on the multiplayer. They had all this promise. Uh, they didn't even give us an Undead Nightmare, which kind of, like, would have been the simplest story expense thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've gone in so hard in the GTA 5 online, which is really interesting and amazing and fun that it exists. But it is such just a cash cow for them. And it's, it's almost like Skyrim when you get kind of upset with Bethesda. You're like, don't release Skyrim for my Alexa. Just, like, <laughs> work on the new game, you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, so, I, I go ahead. we'll Sorry. see when GTA 6 comes out. We'll see if I, have, like, turn around. I saw some of the leaked footage. It looks cool, but at a certain point, how far out can you go without, like, getting some sort of news coverage or some sort of, you know what I mean, some sort of promotion? Are staying in people's minds. I mean, I I've said that my I said that to myself many times before. But it's it's like I just said, it's still one of the most popular games streamed on Twitch, which is crazy Nuts. to me, crazy. Yeah. Um, but like I was a big Red Dead Redemption two player. I played a lot of the online, both on PlayStation four and then on the PC. I recently got back into it on the PC because I was like, I want to play Red Dead online. Um, unfortunately, the hacking community 
on PC is crazy. Um, oh, no. So, like, it's essentially like playing Red Dead Redemption online, but there's Greek gods walking around. And, and you just have to avoid them and hide when they come by. Well, here's the you can't if if they yeah, you can't avoid them. It's it's total they are a god and you are a simple cowboy. <laughs> so but but I will say this for some of the hackers. I have had an equal amount of horrible experiences to amazing experiences in that a lot of people will like hack hack the game and then they'll be like i'm gonna drop all of these chests and it's gonna be full of items and you can just take all of them and so like i was able to make a lot of quick progress because of some of the nice gods in the game uh that's but cool. yeah anyway getting back just, to just like real life the, yeah the evil gods and the good guys <laughs> the, the given they take um uh, but yeah, with uh, Grand Theft Auto um, Five, I really liked it when it came out. I really like Rockstar's storytelling. Um, you know, I think their writing is very funny. I love their uh, social commentary on things. But yeah, I am uh, I'm hurting for GTA Six. I, I I tried to play GTA Five like a couple years ago, and I just couldn't do it anymore. And so, well, yeah, go for it. Well, that just uh, that just like makes me think i want to jump one and then come back to the other news Absolutely. topic we have but uh, a new ftc link or leak hints that a current generation version of red dead redemption 2 is in the works possibly released sometime next year would do would you buy that i don't know what that means uh, yeah is the problem <laughs> and um <sighs> like i what is it going to be out for the ps5 like I, I, if, if they're not supporting the game, if there's no updates coming and they, they, they supported it for a little while. And I did like the updates that they did make, but, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, if I want to just play Red Dead Redemption to like with super amazing graphics, like play the campaign, I'm just going to play it on yeah. my computer. Like I don't need, exactly. I don't need a, there's nothing to remaster and, and like, I don't have anything against remasters, but make remasters when the game is old enough to be remastered uh yeah not when you can raise when you can raise the frame rate by 15 frames a second like that's not i'm not uh, that's it's just money i mean look at the uh they released um uh red dead one uh didn't they do the remaster for that and they're like hey it's, yeah it's uh um, ps4 and switch is, yeah what? <laughs> it's like you're not even releasing them on like the modern generation of consoles or for like pc it and, and it's what 60 60 dollars so like a full price game yeah that's what i wonder about the next one are they going to release it for the full price and then like on xbox it doesn't make a difference because xbox is iterative right mm -hmm. uh so the the version you have should be just as good from the uh, what Xbox One to the current gen PS5. So you're basically just releasing a PS5 version of the game. And again, like you said, if they're not going to support it, like it's not that there yeah. was a dearth of people who didn't buy Red Dead Redemption 2. Everyone bought it. <laughs> so yeah. why not support that community? I just right. think uh, I think the, the problem is, is, you know, the money listens. And um, mm -hmm. I think that Red Dead Redemption is still a very popular game online. And um, and I think a lot of marketing and what people, uh, like when people are like, talking, is this a, a worth it investment? Uh, they're like, well, is it trending online? Is it trending on Twitter? And if it is, they're like, okay, we're going to release it and we know people are going to pay money for it. And some mm. people might. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Is like I was watching an HBO show. I won't get too off track. But I was watching an HBO show like two days ago, and it just got canceled. And I like looked. I was like, oh, it got canceled. Oh crap! And um, and I looked into it, and the ratings it had. It didn't have great ratings, but it was all right. It had all right ratings. But they were saying because it doesn't have a very um, social media, doesn't have a big social media community. There's no hashtags oh. that are trending that the, that uh, HBO is like I think we're, we're just going to cancel it because it's not trending. And it's like well but if people are watching it and it's doing okay in your ratings, it's like like it wasn't doing great but it was like it was like, you know, 5 or 6 in their top shows. Like I don't that's should be good enough, I think, but anyway. Yeah. 
I, I think it's it's a take to like the money people there. And again, I've, I've been kind of um, talking smack on Rockstar, but I think it's take two more than anything making these decisions. Oh sure. That are kind of like, what are we doing here? Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave that where it is. I I hope that uh, it's good. Maybe they release it and like, hey, we we're also doing Undead Nightmare and it's got ray tracing or whatever now. So I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. We'll see. <laughs> okay, this one's a really short story. This is just Mortal Kombat 1. I didn't even know that it was coming out for Switch, but apparently it is out for Switch. And it is a full-priced game. Um, and I I don't know if any if, if, if you're listening to this right now, please, please, please go and look up some Mortal Kombat 1 squi- uh, Switch screenshots because the graphics are absolutely atrocious. And I do not understand why it came out for Switch. This makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know. Yeah. Like, what? What do you like? Or is it for kids? If you shouldn't be buying, kids should not be playing Mortal Kombat. They should not be playing <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Shouldn't be playing this one. No. <laughs> and so. Yeah. That's it's it's the most wild thing because I I can think of like like we said earlier the appeal of Mortal Kombat One is the incredible story right. and the graphics kind of like play into that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not gonna want to play this on the go on my Switch because a I'm sure it will eat up most of the battery and b if it looks like a, a dog's breakfast that has been <laughs> regurgitated, what, what is what's the point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um... Uh, maybe this was like this could have been WB Games stepping in and being like we want it on all consoles, uh, but it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me at all. I think I think the fighting game community there is like a subsect of people who take their switches to like uh, events and they want to have people be able to do like to cross play there not cross play but to play together on their mobile uh, games. So that's that's the best case scenario. But even still, woof, looking at it, yeah. Yeah. Still waiting on that new Nintendo hardware. Still waiting. Yeah. All right. And then our Fingers last crossed. story. Uh, you want to take this one, Phil? Yeah. So uh, so there were some new leaks. Uh, and allegedly Xbox actually at least leaked them because of the court case they're going through. But anyway, uh, these leaks point to uh, some things that Microsoft has said over the past couple of years. One of them being that Phil Spencer really wants to buy Nintendo according to these new internal leaks. <laughs> Which is the wildest thing. Um, good for him for <laughs> dreaming big is all I have to say. I I got a like, take on this, but you, get, you go you go. Yeah, they they already bought Bethesda. They're trying to buy Activision. Do they want all of it? It's it's fine. Tell me your take because I need some sanity. In sure. This um. So as someone who lived in uh in the Seattle area. Uh, and more specifically the Bellevue area where Microsoft actually is and grew up around a lot of uh, Microsoft employees. It's it's a mentality with Microsoft that if they are not doing well in a department to just throw money at the problem. And, um, and Microsoft's solution is always and will continue to be if we can't beat them, buy them. Uh, and... Uh, like I think Microsoft is doing some great things with Game Pass. We talked about Game Pass last week. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's a great deal. Um, I don't see how this happens without yeah. Microsoft doing a huge overpay um, for Nintendo. And they're worth yeah. a lot of money. Uh, and so like if I'm Nintendo, I'm kind of like, why do I need you, Microsoft? Like the only way that ever works is if they completely buy them out, uh, and they're not Bethesda. They're much bigger than Bethesda. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, and they, like I had a friend. They have, go for it. Uh, they, they have Pokemon, which is the biggest IP on the planet. Yeah. On the planet, like Nintendo can print money where they just make like a new babyer version of Pikachu. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's they are they are humongous. Um, the amount of Zelda fans out there, the amount of Mario fans out there, you know, they Mario just had a movie. Mario just had a movie. Okay, <laughs> Halo got a regurgitated, half-assed like TV show on Paramount, Paramount Plus, and mm-hmm. you know, like there were there were moments of that show that were cool and looked like Halo. 
but they were probably like 25 minutes out of what was i don't know like nine hours Ten hours yeah, yeah. like <laughs> so um I don't see this happening. I I mm. think it's possible because Microsoft, you know, while Nintendo is a huge company, Microsoft is a bigger one. So I, I, I think I think Nintendo has their like too much moral to sell. I yeah. think that they're like it's it's part of the Japanese like business culture to take pride in making good stuff. Yeah. Um so fingers crossed Nintendo will hold out strong. No matter how much money they throw at you, if they helicopter in two buildings <laughs> Yeah. for your CEOs just hold strong yeah because we need you yeah we, we yeah I don't I don't want this just monopoly 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 um, mm-hmm. and I still for me I think that Microsoft needs to buy a company and then have that company continue to succeed and like mm-hmm. Starfield is not really a good example of that because uh, it was largely made outside of you know not under microsoft's roof so Mm. we'll we'll see what bethesda continues to do but like you know everything that they've done with the gears of war and the halo series after they've like well we're just gonna you know make uh oh god i don't know what is it cog or i forgot their um the gears company oh Uh, yeah yeah yeah. uh but the new companies that they made with trying to continue the franchises they've been pretty disappointing and uh so you know you guys have enough you have yeah. resources make good games with what you got you got lots of stuff do it. exactly it's it's like that uh, the vampire game that came out like yeah i don't know they have to have unlimited money and they've made good games before what is this what's happening over there microsoft so I, yeah their quality control get on the quality control that's what needs to happen uh 100 percent Okay, so uh, now we're moving into our main topic for this week. So randomly, as PlayStation or Sony likes to do, uh, they're like, "Hey, we're having a state of play tomorrow," <laughs> and then, which I guess is, I guess smart now because everything has such a short news cycle. Um, but they're like, "Yeah, we're we're doing a state of play." I think it was this last Friday that it happened, if I remember correctly. Uh, I believe so. And we got um, not really a lot of announcements, but we got a bunch of release dates. Uh, So that's pretty exciting. Um, Yeah, I think that what's cool about this is like, it's something that Nintendo and I think a lot of other companies have learned, or sorry, companies have learned from Nintendo, specifically Sony. They would do their Nintendo Directs instead of going to E3 in the waning years of E3. And it's just nice for them to be able to control fully what happens, just release a video, Everyone sees the same thing, and they're out. Yep. So we've got this like great list of like cool games, and then Sony can just save up. They don't have to do anything at E3 or at an event. They can just save up and then be like, "Boof! Here's a big, impressive amount of games." Yep. This is, and we're gonna show you when we're ready to show you, uh, mm-hmm. which is also nice. Um, so, like the first game that we have on the list that we got a release date for is uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is part two of the uh, remake of Final Fantasy VII, and it is going to be coming out on Leap Year uh, this upcoming February. So that is very exciting. February 29th. um, A a game that I kind of like, even though Final Fantasy VII Remake exists, I feel still feel like it doesn't feel like there's going to be more. It feels like this is too good of an idea. Just something's going to happen and we're not going to get it. But it's cool to see that we're getting it and it really looks to be living up to that part of the Final Fantasy VII game where you really get into an open world. So, yeah, very excited. Right on. Are you, uh, have you played a lot of Final Fantasy games? Uh, no, I've played Seven Remake and then 16. I haven't finished 16, mm-hmm. but uh, those are my, I'm sort of like new to it. I wanted to play Final Fantasy Seven, but I decided that once I heard the remake was coming, which was what, in the PS3 era, I would wait to play <laughs> the remake. And it was amazing. Really happy that I waited to like see a full new thing happen. Right on. Yeah, I know uh, Final Fantasy Seven is the gold standard of Final Fantasies. So uh, yeah, I have a couple of friends who are very into Final Fantasy Seven. Um, I they had varying opinions with the game. Um, hmm. So I know that it, it looks gorgeous, and I I thought that the revamped combat system 
uh, looked really impressive. I'm curious if they're going to add more uh, gameplay elements or anything like that uh, with the continuation of the game. Um, but looks cool. You know, Severoth mm -hmm. is there. So yeah, everybody loves Severoth. So and he's got his own theme song. From what I hear about this part of the game, though, if uh, in the original, this is where all the mini games kind of come up. Like mm. you, there's like a parade mini game. So it seems like they would have to add in a bunch of extra stuff. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. All right. Uh, next on the list, I am super excited for this one. This is Hell Divers Two, and it is coming out on February eighth, uh, twenty twenty four. I am very excited. I played a lot of Hell Divers One. It is a little uh, weird that they've switched up how the gameplay is uh, hell divers one for those of you who don't know um it was a top down shooter uh co-op shooter and uh, you would go in uh you would fight for super earth very uh, uh what's the what's a very starship troopers-esque and uh it was it was a lot of fun and it was also very chaotic because all there's no option to turn off friendly fire you can just kill your your friends um, constantly if you're not careful <laughs> so uh, now the game has switched to a third person uh, cooperative uh, action shooter and I'm really excited for it um, yeah I just I love co-op games they're m probably my favorite type of multiplayer game by far and I love the ridiculousness of this type of thing are you into Helldivers at all Phil? Oh yeah, so I uh, when I saw the original coming out like years ago on the PS3, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the games that I was like, I know I'm gonna get this. I grew up loving Starship Troopers, not because I watched the movie as a child, but because I watched the uh, it was, I believe it was a UPN like fully 3D cartoon, kind of like in the style of Beast Wars. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, and then I watched the movie, of course, growing up. I actually a couple years ago at E3 got to play hell divers with casper van Dien, who is like the johnny rico from uh starship troopers they were promoting a new movie they're doing and uh edward Numenar, i think i'm messing up his name uh Numir, um one of the writers who also came back to write this like new starship troopers like fully cg uh sequel and it, they were like, yeah, this is basically Starship Troopers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that it's going from top down at like the last game to fully 3D. Um, I'm I'm really excited for that. It looks so incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love blasting aliens. Love that. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> I'm 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 very excited with it. Probably gonna play with lots of my friends. Um, but yeah, yeah. Let us know mm -hmm. if you're excited about it yourself. All right, what, what do we got next? Homestar Open Beta. Yes. We have, uh, what is what is the game? We have the Squid Kids game at home. The Splatoon. <laughs> or Splatoon. Splatoon, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm, yeah, it, it's a total ripoff of Splatoon. It's Splatoon mm -hmm. with in, in 4K. That's, that's what yeah. it is. <laughs> so, cool. Um, I... I think it is smart. They are doing an open beta and the dates for those. It's uh, going to be at the very end of this month, September 29th to October 1st. So that weekend. Um, I think that's a very smart move because I think a lot of people don't care. Um, and the <laughs> best way to convince people that your game is good is by having a free weekend where people can just check it out. Um, are you it's, at... it's great for everyone who doesn't have a Switch to be able to play not Splatoon yeah uh, on there so you know what hell yeah enjoy yeah so right on um next uh we got avatar frontiers of pandora going to be releasing this december 7th any yeah. uh, interest in that you know i've never cared about avatar <laughs> um <laughs> i saw both the movies and as and then when i watched out i i felt like that was great. I don't need to think about this anymore until I went to uh, Animal Kingdom, the Disney park in Florida with Avatar Land. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. From what I've heard about this game is that it's basically Far Cry 3 with a Avatar dressing. And for that, super into it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, like I'll, I will play it to destroy all the bases. Uh, I, I hope that there's... So it's it's the game is like you are captured as a young Navi trained by the humans who are invading the planet 
and uh, then you like they send you on missions, and then you can like become part of the Navi and fight back against the people who are invading. I wonder if there'll be like a uh, what's the moral system where you can choose to work with the bad guys because it would be fun to be a big blue colonizer. Is all I say. <laughs> yeah, that that's gonna go great with uh, the PR team's gonna love that. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I similarly like. I don't dislike Avatar, but I'm also kind of like it's it's cool, you know. Hmm. You know, I, I think like Avatar got a lot of uh, flack for ripping off Pocahontas, but I w- would also say that there's not a lot of other Pocahontas stories out there. And so, like, True. if you name an action movie, I can name you another action movie that's just like that action movie. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so um, I'm not particularly excited um, as as like a fan and uh, not a fan of the franchise, I guess. But I think it looks OK. Um, you said it was like Far Cry that immediately kind of put a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth just because I feel like the last couple of Far Cries have burned me. Um, yeah just i feel like they're kind of like the fast food of video games uh where it's just like this is a video game (laughs) you can shoot people and you can capture the camp and that's you want to you want to hunt a boar and make a bag yeah you can do that okay (laughs) (laughs) and you're like "Uh, okay so you know and sometimes a burger and fries is fine uh but it's it's release place at the which is what uh december 7th yes is probably the best case scenario for it because it's in a lull yes and those of us who are home with our families and like oh, i'm sick of playing spider-man or baldur's gate or starfield or lies of p or armored core we go like oh uh, yeah, let me check out creed's coming too Asa- oh god um call of duty <laughs> <laughs> grant the title five <laughs> <laughs> um, again yeah again <laughs> Uh, yeah, I yeah I will agree with you there. That's it's a good window to release. I also think it's smart um, as far as like Christmas shopping. Um, like parents are gonna be like, oh excuse me. Um, parents are gonna be like, oh I took my kid to see this movie. Uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe he'll like the game and they'll they'll mm-hmm. buy that. Like I remember uh, when I was a kid, my dad bought me the original Jack and Daxter for the PS2 uh, because. He thought that it was Yu-Gi-Oh! And he saw me watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Because they had the spiky hair. And so he yeah. thought it was the same thing. And so he put me... Jack- and I love Jack and Dexter. But that was that the reason. That is the sweetest dad thing that I've ever heard. Like, I think my son likes his spiky hair. Yeah, he's a spiky hair guy. <laughs> this one, he's got a little pet. That's yeah. That's cool. It's one of his cards. That's awesome. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I don't know. Not not particularly excited, but we'll see. I will watch reviews, and I hope to be surprised. So, if if this reviews at like an eight, uh, I will be like, okay, I'll probably pick it up. If it reviews it at like a nine, I will be flabbergasted and then buy it immediately. <laughs> I will yeah. I will try to track down the journalist and see how they got paid. Um, yeah, that's nine. right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so. <laughs> um okay uh next up is ghost runner 2 which is coming out next month so a lot closer than some of the other games uh on october the 26th and during playstation state of play they also uh, let us know that the demo is available for everybody to check out uh and i believe the demo is available on playstation and pc um so which is very exciting i have not played uh ghost runner 1 but I've seen a lot of it online, and I'm very impressed. Impressed to the point of like, I, I think maybe uh, maybe I pick this one up. Are you? Have you seen Ghost Runner before? Like, I've I've played a good amount of Ghost Runner one. Okay. Uh, it it felt like Mirror's Edge, uh, but more badass. <laughs> if I could. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's something about samurai blades and robots and like you so there was like a slow down time mechanic so you could do this really cool stuff where you'd like run off a wall jump 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 there's a dude shooting at you you jump in the air dodge it and then like slow down time and cut him in half that was that whole game just immense badass moments uh, a a panoply of them raining down from the heavens Uh, and in this new one there's a motorcycle so i'm in (laughs) 
It's if you thought we were going fast before. <laughs> you don't even know Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all I could say is if they put an Akira slide in there where you turn, like, oh, use I'm... the sword to break, I'm in. That's, yeah. If they don't, that's an incredibly missed, that's a big missed opportunity. Yeah. I, I think the first one is available on, like, the PS Plus Premium catalog. So if you have that, uh, I would check it out and just, like, at least play a few levels to get some hands on it. Because it's very fast and frenetic, but it's so much fun. The, the levels are more like puzzles than they are, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Than they are more just, like, run through it as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like, okay, how do I how do I make this happen? How do I get by that one guy? I use all these tools in my tool book to... Right really on. great all right and uh why don't we talk about uh baby steps summer first before we get into our last one um hell you, yeah you pointed this one out to me uh phil could you explain a little bit about it <laughs> yeah baby steps i'm not sure uh why this man is in his underwear a big onesie underwear out in the wilderness uh but he is just trying to walk somewhere else He's trying to get out of the wilderness. That is the game. It's a uh, strand type game, as Paul so excellently. <laughs> well, Dunky, Dunky, Dunky said that for the, oh, Dunky, okay. the Dunky fans out there. There we go. Um, it, but yeah, it is. You're just walking, and it looks like you control the different like feet placement. Um, what I was amazed by in the trailer is that he's very reactive to like how you're approaching, how you're stepping over something or going up a hill. Uh, it just looks like Octodad or Getting Over It. Um, just a really nice little personal game to play. I'm sure it'll be great with the streamers, like trying to speed to uh, oh, play yeah. it out. It's, yeah, yeah, lots of lots of funny moments are going to come out of this this game, definitely. Yeah. So excited for that. It's summer 2024, but I, I just love it when Sony's like, "Hey, here's a little indie darling. Yeah, we'll see you in a year." <laughs> Uh, for the real fans out there, this, yeah. is, this is the game you tuned in for. <laughs> real gamers only. Yep. Uh, not a uh, not our next game, which is of course uh, Sony's big hitter uh, for this holiday season, which is Spider Man Two. And I would probably say more than any other game on this list, they released the most information for Spider Man um so several things uh they talked about a lot of skins which i am uh i think it was they said over 65 different skins which i'm very excited for but i'm also a little overwhelmed by that number (laughs) like i don't (laughs) like what am i gonna wear (laughs) like (laughs) i i think the thing is like hey the three or four you're gonna like are probably gonna be in this one that's what they're saying right Right. Yeah, I found myself in the first game going between like four different skins out of all the ones I had and really just sticking with a couple once I like fit the vibe, you know. Right. I have I have like this problem where like you know and it's like it's like, you know, playing with dolls and dressing up dolls essentially is mm-hmm. what it is. And and it's just like, well, it's cold out, so he should have a warmer outfit on. <laughs> yeah. like like that kind of that kind of stuff uh, and and then i also have a problem where i'm like well i don't think this outfit would be canon so i'm not gonna wear it <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, i i think be- because spider-man like i've played so much afterwards that's when i like really mess around with the skins but yes. when i'm playing the game i'm like this kind of fits where he's at emotionally mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if it's going to be tied to the powers like in the first game or i hope if they're going to be like yeah yeah that's that's gonna be too too many and and like i so i'm sure they could fix the ui in a way where it's not connected and i'm sure it'll be fine uh yeah but uh what else did they talk about uh with this game they talked about switching uh between uh peter and miles pretty much uh simultaneously uh a la our favorite game grand theft auto 5 um (laughs) so and they did it in what is to be believed real time where they showed uh, switching between miles and Peter. And like, that looks, that looks awesome. That looks really fun. Um, They, they took, like you said, a page out of uh, GTA five's book. One of my favorite things about that game was switching to Trevor and seeing what the hell he was up to. Yeah. Um, uh, The, when they switched from miles to Peter in this one, Peter's like doing crunches on the side of a building and Mm -hmm. then he like flips into it. I'm so excited to see all the different things they had. Uh, notably, in the last or in the original Spider-Man for PS4, when you fast traveled, you were on the subway, and like that changed every time a little bit. 
and it was such like it showed me how much they got the character so i'm excited to see what little bits insomniac's gonna throw in here for this yeah i am i i and uh i know uh ign uh just did they were uh taken behind the scenes and uh did it got a lot of time i think they got like three hours to play it about halfway through the game and they were ecstatic about how amazing it was of course you know you need to keep in mind that when companies bring re reporters in they're wined and dined and another thing and uh, <laughs> and so i believe it's 65 65 yes that's right <laughs> and so you know it needed you know grain of salt all of that um but mm. i'm really excited for how the game looks I'm really glad that you're just able to switch between uh, Miles and Peter. And um, like, I really hope, because I, I, I liked Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I also didn't feel like it was a fully realized uh, game. And so yeah. I, I think it's it's great that they're really being like, okay, no, Miles is sharing the spotlight. He's not just a character that you're mm. going to play, play with in certain sequences in the game. It's like, no, you can, if you want to play, like, every time you're doing an open world section, if you want to play it as Miles, play it as Miles. Do your thing. Um, so I think that's, totally. that's awesome. And then another big thing that they announced for it is the size of the map. Um, they've doubled the size of the map, so they've said, uh, by adding the adjacent neighborhoods across the river, uh, Queens and Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. Which is very exciting uh, to me. Um do you have any thoughts on that? Ah, yeah. I'm, I'm just so excited. Uh, I think they're brilliant because the in the original game, when you played in uh, Manhattan, like swinging across the towers really, really worked. Like you'd get up high. And then there were certain sections where you kind of would like interact with different structures. But in this one, it's a lot of like lower buildings. There's Coney Island. Um, Brooklyn has Visions Academy from like the Spider-Verse movies. So I'm excited to like see all of that be in the mix but also the addition of the web wings helps you get around those areas and I, i'm guessing they've added probably a bunch of new stuff of like uh you see in the first trailer i think miles does like a web not boomerang a slingshot uh slingshot yeah i'm sure that'll be very handy in this as well so basically i trust insomniac so much that i'm like hey if you add a new thing in i'm sure you go support it let's go yeah they yeah. are just so good at making fun intuitive gameplay like mm -hmm. they really are and uh you know kind of we were talking about uh, marvel's avengers at the beginning of the show and uh it's you know it's it's so good to like just even the old spider-man game just playing it and how it just feels like it's totally designed around spider-man and spider-man's yeah. abilities and spider-man's mobility and uh i'm i'm so excited for this game and i know you said uh last week i think that it is uh, a sleeper for your game of the year possibly uh, already i've got my 18 inches of venom coming my way <laughs> <laughs> and i i realize the phrasing on that <laughs> at this point but i am still very excited for it to arrive and for me to find a place to display it um yeah i my secret hope is that at the end of the game you can also like switch to Venom in real time. Mm. I'm hoping that that character sticks around for a bit or, or whatever they're intending to do. Um, yeah, I've, oof, I just can't wait. I can't wait for this game. I'm gonna try and seque sequester myself for a few days and just like put my phone on do not disturb and get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's been some chatter online um, I know I'm pretty certain they're not going to do any uh, multiplayer for this game. Uh, certainly not competitive multiplayer. Um, but uh, there's been chatter online about possibly doing um, uh, some cooperative uh, experiences. So I think that would be very interesting um, with the possibility of doing it with Peter and Miles. Uh, yeah. Or maybe even doing it with Peter, Miles, and Venom. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or uh, even more spider people since uh, especially with the uh, the spider universe movies uh, getting so popular I honestly would love to see like a third version of this game be a fully multiplayer like cooperative you're playing as uh, Peter Miles and spider Gwen or something like would make me very very happy uh, but I'm also pretty happy that they're sticking to at least they've said they're sticking to their single player vision 
because they tell just such good stories. They they get yeah. the heart of the character more than most of the movies do. So, yeah, they do. <laughs> and I feel like they're able to tell original stories uh, even with all the familiar faces, which is mm-hmm. which is hard to do. And you know, like even in the first game, they focused on a you know chapter of uh, Peter Parker's life that really he's like older. He's not older, but he's he's like 25, 26. And usually you see Spider-Man when he's in high school and college or maybe he just graduated or something like that. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see more. I'm curious to see what they do with Miles and, and his arc and uh, where uh, what, what happens at the end of the game. Um, uh, honestly, like the first game, the fact that Dr. Ock was in it, but... There were moments where I was like, I wonder if he's going to become Dr. Otto Octavius the same for another game. They mm-hmm. like they played it so well, uh, and they told the story so intricately that I was very happy to see that they paid off that character. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see with this next one who they introduce. But, woof. Yeah, Octavius was a slow burn, and it's like as soon as you see him, you're like, oh my god, it's Doc Ock. It's, this, this is going to be Doc Ock. And, and it still kind of caught you off guard by the end of the game. It's weird. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, very, very excited. Uh, all right. I think that's it for all of our news this week. Anything else you, uh, you can think of Phil before we, before we say good night to this week's podcast? Ooh. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm just, man, I, it, like I said, so many good games this year. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to buy Mortal Kombat one and play that as well. Uh, and I, yeah, it's real good. I feel every week, every week, I feel like it's gonna be like, I should buy that. Next week is Cyberpunk, right? The, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit, but whew, this year, it, I feel like every, it's like what, every seven years they say there's great games. I think we're in one <laughs> of those seven year cycles right now. Yeah, I mean, we, it was kind of weird because COVID disrupted the flow a bit. So I think mm. I think it was kind of, I think it's kind of like last year and this year kind of combined. We got mm. a lot of games that were pushed back and, and jumbled up and, and whatnot. Um, yeah. All right. But uh, I think that's going to do it for us uh, for this week. So thank you for joining us on the GGG podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please click the subscribe button or that like button if you would. And if you're craving more Golden Glazed gaming content, you can find us on TikTok at Golden Glazed gaming uh our podcast is also going to be going up on spotify google podcasts and apple podcasts so if that is your preferred podcast listening method go for it and subscribe to us on those sites all right uh thanks thanks for being here phil i'll see you next week ggs g Uh, (laughs) i'm trying i'm trying something it was yeah it was a great attempt i loved it (laughs) 